African Americans have a rich and complex history in the United States that dates back over 400 years. At the turn of the 21st century, African Americans accounted for a large portion of the U.S. population, with 36 million residing in the South and smaller but substantial communities in cities like New York, Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, and Houston. These communities have played a critical role in shaping American society, influencing its culture, politics, and economy in countless ways. The story of African Americans in America began in 1619 when 20 Africans were brought to the English colony of Virginia as indentured servants. Over the years, their population grew, but the treatment of African Americans took a dark turn in the 1750s when they were considered an inferior race and forced into slavery. The horrors of the transatlantic slave trade saw countless Africans traded as merchandise and shipped across the Atlantic to the West Indies, North Atlantic, and Caribbean. The journey was a brutal one, with at least one-sixth of slaves dying from shock and disease. Slavery in America during the 17th and 18th centuries was a dark chapter in the nation's history. Africans and African Americans were forced to work as slaves on tobacco, rice, and indigo plantations along the southern coast. Stretching from the Chesapeake Bay colonies of Maryland and Virginia to the state of Georgia, over time, slavery became deeply ingrained in the South's economy, particularly in the Cockmanshire plantations. Despite efforts to end the slave trade, including legislation passed by President Thomas Jefferson in 1807, it only boosted the domestic slave trade within the country. The treatment of slaves was brutal and inhumane. Black women were forced to conceive as early as age 13 and were required to give birth as often as possible, with no regard for their health or well-being. Despite the widespread use of slavery, there was still a small population of free black people, estimated to be about 10% of the entire African-American population. These free individuals were either former indentured servants or their descendants, or had migrated from the West Indies, or were freed by their owners. While free black people in the South faced many restrictions and limitations, they were still subject to similar restrictions as slaves, and were not allowed to vote, own property, or travel freely. They were also at risk of being kidnapped and re-enslaved at any moment. In the North, free black people were not subjected to the same restrictions as those in the South, but still faced prejudice and discrimination. During the 1840s and 1850s, abolitionists in Britain and the United States were fiercely determined to end the scourge of slavery through extensive propaganda campaigns. The movement was gaining momentum as African-American leaders who were emerging in major cities like Philadelphia, Boston, and New York, came together for national and state conventions to discuss their next steps. Despite their shared goal of ending slavery and discrimination, there were stark differences among these leaders in terms of their approaches. Some believed that slaves should rise up and overthrow their masters, while others thought that the path to freedom lay in economic empowerment and the creation of a black nation in Africa. This led to the formation of Liberia in West Africa, which served as a beacon of hope for the African-American community and laid the foundations for pan-African nationalism. The Missouri Compromise of 1820, which required an equal number of slave and free states, had been disregarded, and by 1860, slavery was allowed throughout all American territories. This was a dark chapter in American history, and one that would be challenged with the election of Abraham Lincoln as president on an anti-slavery platform. The Civil War had erupted and the battle to end slavery was set in motion. Despite the desire of many to immediately abolish slavery, Lincoln's initial goal was to gradually emancipate slaves with compensation for slave owners. However, in September of 1862, he declared all slaves to be free with the Emancipation Proclamation, making the Civil War a battle for slavery's abolition. After the Civil War, Nearly four million African Americans, who had previously been enslaved, were granted citizenship and the right to vote through the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. Despite these gains, the rights of African Americans were often disregarded during the Reconstruction era, especially in the South. As a result, African American leaders, both from the North and abroad, attempted to gain political power in the South to ensure that the rights granted to them by the Amendments were respected. Despite the efforts of these leaders, 
the push for political power was short-lived due to various economic pressures and violent anti-black activities, such as those carried out by the Ku Klux Klan. The result was the re-emergence of white supremacy, which dominated the southern states and resulted in widespread racial segregation. African Americans in both the North and South struggled to find employment and many chose to migrate west in search of better opportunities. The impact of World War I in the early 1900s saw a significant portion of the African American population still living in the South. However, the economic depression led to an increase in African Americans moving north in search of better opportunities. The involvement of African Americans in World War I saw thousands of black officers commissioned and many served in labor battalions and service regiments abroad. In 1919, the Universal Negro Improvement Association was established in Harlem, New York, by Marcus Garvey, a black nationalist born in Jamaica. With hundreds of thousands of members, it was considered to be the largest mass movement of African Americans in the country's history. The organization aimed to promote black pride, self-reliance, and unity among African Americans, and it became a platform for the expression of political and social views of the black community. The Garvey movement faced a major setback when its leader, Marcus Garvey, was arrested and eventually deported to his home country. The Great Depression of the 1930s had a devastating impact on the African American community, leading to widespread job losses and discrimination. This, combined with the indifference of the Republican administration of the time, resulted in a shift in political allegiance among black voters towards the Democratic Party, especially in the northern cities. Franklin D. Roosevelt, the Democratic candidate in the 1932 presidential election, received strong support from African Americans. The implementation of the New Deal reforms provided much-needed relief for the African American community, including low-cost public housing, education and job opportunities. The outbreak of World War II and the resulting industrial boom brought an end to the Great Depression and opened up even more job opportunities for African Americans. This led to the Great Migration, where increasing numbers of black people moved from the rural south to the industrial cities of the north. However, the migration also led to increased job competition and housing shortages, which resulted in race riots breaking out in many areas. The worst of these riots occurred in Detroit in June 1943. Although African-American soldiers were segregated during World War II, integrated officer training was approved in 1949 four years after the war ended and the armed services adopted a full integration policy. The civil rights movement, which was a sustained and determined effort by African Americans to secure their rights and achieve equality, was a critical aspect of this period in American history. The 1940s and 1950s were a crucial period for African Americans as they embarked on a journey of nonviolent resistance to combat segregation and discrimination. The Montgomery bus boycott of 1955-56, to 56, led by the visionary Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., was a significant event in this regard as it sparked a wave of direct action campaigns across the country. In 1960, the Greensboro Student Sit-Ins movement in North Carolina caught the nation's attention and inspired similar demonstrations across the South. The Freedom Rides of 1961 in which activists challenged segregation on interstate buses in Alabama and Mississippi, marked a new level of boldness and determination. The civil rights movement continued to gain momentum, and by 1964, the Freedom Now Party in Michigan was another powerful example of African-American activism. The culmination of these efforts was King's historic speech at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. in 1963, in which he addressed a crowd of over 200 and 50,000 demonstrators gathered on the Mall. This event, and the subsequent march on Washington, helped secure the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which banned discrimination in voting, public accommodations, and employment. It's worth noting that the progress of the civil rights movement was reflected in the numbers. Just 15 years after the Supreme Court prescribed all white primary elections in 1944, the number of registered black voters in the South had increased more than fivefold, reaching 1.25 million in 1958. This was a testament to the power of nonviolent resistance and the determination of African Americans to secure their rights and freedoms. 
The period from the 1940s to the 1960s was a transformative one for African Americans as they successfully used nonviolent activism to challenge segregation and discrimination. The civil rights movement had a profound impact on the nation, leading to a significant expansion of black political power and the passage of groundbreaking legislation that outlawed discrimination. This period remains a pivotal moment in African American history, marking the beginning of a new era of equality and justice for all. The late 20th century and early 21st century have been a time of great change and progress for African Americans in the political arena. In 1989, Douglas Wilder made a landmark achievement as he was elected as the first African American governor in United States history. This event marked a significant step forward for the African American community and was a testament to the progress that had been made since the civil rights movement. Four years later, Carol Mosley Braun made her own historical mark by becoming the first black woman to be elected to the U.S. Senate. This was yet another triumph for the African American community, showing that the doors to political power were slowly opening for them. The number of African American office holders in the United States also showed remarkable growth in this era, reaching 8936 in the year 2000, a net increase of 7467 since 1970. In 2001, there were 484 black mayors, and the 39 African American members of Congress came together to form the Congressional Black Caucus. This group serves as a political block for issues related to African Americans, and helps to bring the community's concerns and needs to the forefront of national politics. The appointment of prominent African Americans to high federal offices, including Colin Powell, who served as the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff from 1989 to 1993, and later as the United States Secretary of State from 2000 and 1 to 2005, as well as Condoleezza Rice, who served as assistant to the President for National Security Affairs in 2001, and as Secretary of State in 2005. Ron Brown, who served as the United States Secretary of Commerce from 1993 to 1996, and the presence of black Supreme Court justices, Thurgood Marshall and Clarence Thomas, also demonstrates the increasing visibility of African Americans in the political arena. The 2008 election was a particularly historic moment, as Barack Obama, the son of a Kenyan father and white American mother, won the presidency with overwhelming support from African American voters in the Democratic primaries. This election was not just a victory for Barack Obama, but for the entire African American community, who saw one of their own reach the highest office in the United States of America. The election of Barack Obama showed that anything was possible, and that the dream of equal opportunity was becoming a reality. The post-civil rights era is also marked by the new Great Migration, in which millions of African Americans returned to the South, including Texas, Georgia, Florida, and North Carolina, often in pursuit of increased economic opportunities and a desegregated life in southern cities. This movement has helped to revitalize southern communities and has given African Americans the opportunity to thrive in an environment that was once hostile to them. Despite these significant advancements, the fight for equality continues. The recent events, including the death of George Floyd and subsequent protests, have sparked a renewed push for change and have brought attention to the ongoing struggle for racial justice. Despite the horrors they faced, African Americans persevered and made their mark on American society. They brought with them their cultural traditions, languages, music, and religious practices, which have all had a profound impact on American culture. Over the years, they have fought tirelessly for their rights and freedoms, enduring centuries of discrimination, violence, and segregation. From the Underground Railroad to the Civil Rights Movement, African Americans have been at the forefront of social change and have helped to bring about a more just and equal society. The journey of African Americans in the United States has been one of perseverance, resilience, and determination. From being torn from their homelands, to being treated as property, to fighting for their rights, African Americans have played a vital role in shaping the American identity. As the country moves forward, it is crucial that the legacy of their struggle is remembered and honored. The future holds the promise of a better tomorrow, but only if all Americans come together to break down the barriers of prejudice and discrimination. 
The road ahead may be long and challenging, but with courage and determination, a brighter future is within reach.